What is going on guys? So weird setting to start this video, but as you can tell from the title, we have a lot of parts from or for the Turbo X that have just come in. So what you can see here, just I'll be very basic right now, Corona downpipe, Corona mid pipe, DO88 intercooler and DO88 intercooler hoses and all the piping that comes with uh, your intercoolers. I do want to give a huge shout out to e Euro Parts 1 uh, Krona 2 and 3 DO88. It wouldn't, uh, this wouldn't have been possible without all three of them working together and being very generous with this sponsorship. I do also want to mention a couple other parts that you will need for the uh, exhaust install. One of them, oddly enough, being coolant, because in order to get the old downpipe out, you're going to have to take out the coolant expansion tank and you're gonna basically have to drain the coolant as you guys will see. And then we also have, this is off of Krona's website, this basically will allow me to pass emissions because as you can see, this downpipe does not have a catalytic converter. So I will get a check engine light if I do not use this and this will allow me to not have a check engine light and pass emissions. And the next off we have some heat wrap. So we're gonna heat wrap the downpipe before we put it in just to help kind of keep that heat in. And I mean, there's really no reason not to do it especially since we're gonna be, you know, having the part out. And next off is Gasket Maker. Just got this at AutoZone and, uh, you know, seven, eight dollars. So if you guys are interested in an exhaust system for your V6 Aero or for your four cylinder 9.3 or your 9.5, make sure to check out Krona, great products. I've heard nothing but good reviews about them. So I'm excited to see how this sounds. As you guys know, and I'm gonna try not to ramble right now because I know this video is going to be very long as is, but the Turbo X already has a rear muffler delete. So with a catless downpipe and a very, we'll just say unrestricted mid pipe, this car is going to be very, very close to straight pipe. So. I'm kind of scared to hear how loud it's going to be. So the Turbo X is out waiting in the garage. Let's go ahead and bring all the parts out there, everything we need, and let's get into this install, guys. I am so excited. So first thing we are going to do here is remove the battery and the battery tray. So let's go ahead and get to doing that. Oh yeah, look at how rusty that is. Okay, so now to get the battery tray out, we've gotta take this one, this one, and that one out, and then we gotta disconnect a couple things around here. So the next thing we gotta do is remove the coolant expansion tank. Now, of course, to do that, we've gotta drain the coolant, and of course, it would not be a downpipe install on any car without removing the coolant overflow tank and draining the coolant and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna come down here, find the drain plug, and uh, dump all the coolant out. Quick update, I was under the car for probably 10 or 15 minutes and that drain plug is one, hard to access, and two, looks like it hasn't been touched in a very long time. So it is very stuck on there. So uh, really, I don't need to drain all the coolant. I just need to get as much coolant as I can out of the expansion tank. So when I take this off, coolant doesn't go everywhere. So. I ran up to the store and got this here fancy turkey baster. Definitely not the best way to do this, but it's going to work. So uh, you guys are going to watch me struggle here for a couple minutes doing this. The things I do for love. So now that we got it a little bit off, there is another hose down here as well as a fastener that's going to be very hard for you guys to see. 
but you're gonna need to disconnect that and then this expansion tank should just come straight out. Okay guys, so while I have this all still on here, I wanna show you the metal clip, or the clip, the metal, the plug is right down there, the blue piece, and that connects right into there, right here. Uh, it, just a little bit of prying got that out. You can see this metal pin right here. Now what I did to get that out is I just I just took the smallest pliers I could find and just dug it under there and it just came right up pretty much. So now the expansion tank should literally just slide right off. Fingers crossed. Well, I was not expecting to lose more coolant there, so uh, there's a bit of a mess on the ground. But good news is we at least got that off. On Krona's website, there's full detailed instructions on how to do this, so I've been kind of following that so far. And if you are following along with me, I'm actually going to skip steps six and seven for now because basically these two steps are starting to unbolt the downpipe from down there and all that stuff. But because I'm going to have to get these bolts off the turbo here eventually, and I heard those are damn near impossible to do without WD-40 or PB Blaster, I'm going to remove this heat shield first and spray these a while and then go back. And the last one is right back there. Okay, never mind. There's actually a fourth one right down there. You can't really see it. Actually, you can right there in the middle of the screen. There's a fourth one that we got to do too. So now we're going to spray down. I believe there's three bolts, maybe four. Here, here, here. And we're going to spray those down with PB Blaster. I'm going to go eat some lunch or breakfast, I guess. And uh, we'll catch up in a few minutes. Okay, guys, so we are now under the car. This right here uh, is the mid pipe right here. Oh, my lunge just hit it. And then, of course, right above that is the down pipe. So there are three bolts. There's the two right here, and then there's one on the other side. I literally can't move the camera at all to show you guys. We're going to move those three, and then there is a, another piece uh, right here. After this, I think we have to do this other heat shield right here under the down pipe. I think there's only one 10 millimeter that's holding it in. edge of my finger there's a, uh, a nut that I popped off that's supposed to help as well but apparently we might have to do something with the shifter linkage too because I can see that that part is kind of in the way. I'll put an arrow or something in the video and try and get both the bolts in here uh, and then there's another one that's a little bit further down under there that basically holds the shifter linkage on and when we take those two off we should be able to move that out of the way and that should give us enough room to get this out Fingers crossed, so let's get to it. Okay, I need a break. That was easy. Yeah, I didn't expect that to work. Surprised by that. It's loose. So now we have to uh, put a jack underneath the engine and unbolt the transmission mount, which is located under the battery tray here, which I believe is this right here with these three bolts. So this should allow us to lower uh, all this an inch or two, and then we should be able to get that out. Fingers crossed. Okay, so now we're gonna lower the jack and that should lower the transmission by about an inch or two. So hopefully nothing breaks when I do this. There we go. 
There we go. Finally. I never thought this day would come. Holy crap, is this thing heavy. That took uh, quite a bit of work to get out. As you can see, here's the new one, which is, for one, a million times lighter. And I'm not going to mess with it too much. I don't want to mess up the heat wrap on here, but as you can see, it comes off the turbo right here, which is blocked because we bent this heat shield out of the way. It goes down in there and back into there and then out the bottom of the car. So I'm going to take a break and uh, we'll come back to this later and start with the reinstall process. All right, guys, so we are back for another day or night, actually. Uh, on the install of the downpipe. So we're now going to try to install this. Um, a couple quick things I want to point out. Um, I have, of course, the stock downpipe here and the Krona downpipe right here. Now, one thing about this downpipe is that all Krona products, first off, are made in America. So I think that's pretty cool that they're all made domestically. I mean, of course, for those of you that don't live in the US, they're not domestic, but you know what I mean. So one thing that I really was amazed by is just how much lighter this downpipe is, ignore the uh, thing right there, just how much lighter that is than the stock downpipe. And I would figure that most of that would be because of the cat. So we ended up taking a few extra things off. I gotta bend this heat shield back into place and figure out how that goes back on um, and put a bracket on there and then a couple other little things and then we're going to start uh, putting everything back together. I'm gonna try and put as much as I can on, especially this uh, heat shield that goes by the brake booster right down here because one of the nuts to get that on is way down in there and that's going to be so hard to get on uh, with the downpipe in. So I'm going to hope that I can squeeze the downpipe it, uh, through there uh, while the, uh, the heat shield is off. So uh, fingers crossed with that, that should save me a lot of time and frustration. But I'm going to stop talking, let's get into it. Now it is time to get our defouler ready to be installed. So because this downpipe is catless, your car is going to throw a check engine light. And it's going to think, well because you don't have a cat, you know, something's wrong. So the best way to get rid of that is with this defouler. Now this is available on Krona's website, it's about $45, and it apparently Currently has a 100% success rate so hopefully that'll work for the Turbo X too. So the old O2 sensor will screw into this end. We will then put the washer on this end and put one of these. Uh, I'm going to be using the middle one because I've heard that one works best. We're going to be putting that in there and then this will screw into the downpipe. And this will basically give the ECU a false reading and make it think that there's a cat there. I actually am going to be using this one, the one with the smallest hole. Um, I'm deciding to switch from the middle one just because I've been told by uh, Matt at Krona himself and a couple other people that this is the best one to use. So I was wrong uh, when I just said earlier that uh, the middle one is what you should use. So use this one. We're going to just drop it in there. Alright, so there we go. The snap ring is in there and now we're ready to screw this into the secondary O2 sensor and get it on the car. <laughs> I reattached the uh, bolts for the uh, shifter linkage right now, and now the next step, according to the instructions, is to go ahead and put the new downpipe in. But, I'm going to try to see if I can get the downpipe in with this heat shield on, because there's a nut for this heat shield that is way down in there. There's a little rusty spot right in the middle of the screen. If you can see that, that's where that's supposed to bolt into. So. As you can tell, it's a very hard spot to access even without the downpipe in. It took us a very long time to get it out uh, when, before we got the original downpipe out. So I'm going to try to get that in first and probably leave the other one uh, loose because it's just right here so it's easy to uh, put back on. And hopefully I can still fit the downpipe in. That should save me some time later. Come on, puppy. So there's the defouler and there's the O2 sensor see the orientation of it I think that's a good amount I'm just yeah. Yeah. I'm so fed up with these expectations they keep weighing me down my heart is begging me to get the hell out of my head I'm gonna live inside the upside down
Hey guys, it is very, very late at night. It's about 11.30. Uh, my dad and I have been working for the past four hours, and as you can see, uh, we, we have made quite a bit of progress. So everything up top here is done. So new downpipe is uh, tucked away. I mean, you can't even see it with all these heat shields. I mean, it looks like, it, it looks exactly the same up here. But, oh. Okay, anyways. So all that we have left uh, to do in the morning, I kind of wanted to get done tonight, but he was tired and it's probably going to take two people to uh, get this mid pipe in, in place. So all we have to do tomorrow is uh, put the mid pipe in and she should be ready to start up. I am so excited guys. Sorry I didn't film a whole lot on the reinstallation. Um, pretty much everything on the reinstallation, it's no different than when we took it apart. Like there's nothing that we changed. Now the only thing that will need to be changed, and this is what we haven't done yet. So there's this bracket. Now this bracket bolts to the oil pan and the downpipe. Now as you can see, it's currently in two pieces because some of the bolts uh, were just corroded on. These two were just corroded on to the to the old downpipe. So we had to, my dad had to cut it in half to get it off. But it basically looks like that. Now on any cross wheel drive V6, so an air all wheel drive or a Turbo X, you're going to need to modify it. Now I don't know exactly how. If you look on Krona's websites and if you're looking, if you're following along with those instructions, then you'll see uh, more of what I mean. But this is going to have to be modified and of course welded back together. We are so close to completion on the Turbo X. So now all we have to do today, uh, it's everything's under the car, so I'm not really going to be able to film much of it because uh, the car's not on a lift. Um, but it's just all going to be fairly simple stuff. So we're just going to put some RTV, this gasket maker you saw us put that between the turbo and the downpipe. So we're going to be putting this between the midpipe and the downpipe along with this, this is the old gasket that was on the old mid pipe and down pipe. So yeah, all we really have to do is attach this to the down pipe and then of course the other end is gonna slide into the rest of the exhaust and there's a, a flange around there that'll tighten down. So yeah, let's get to it. I'm super excited and then we should be ready to start her up. Some people when they do the heat wrap have smoke coming out of the, you know, from the heat wrap the first time they start it, but we don't have that right now, so I'm kind of confused. Um, I'm not going to complain about it though. No check engine light yet either. <laughs> oh, wow. That is, I am speechless right now. That, I don't even know what to say. This is just incredible. This, I, I don't know. I'm filming this a couple days after the install. I wanted to drive it around a bit, get my first impressions before I filmed the outro so that way I could tell you guys my thoughts on the exhaust system. Now, I thought when I started it up I would have to clear a check engine light, but in the 150 miles or so that I've put on it already, I have not had a check engine light yet. So. Looks like the defouler has done its job. We're gonna hope that it doesn't come back on because if I do have to change out the uh, the little ring or whatever it is, whatever you wanna call it in there, the spacer, um, that's gonna be a pain in the ass. So yeah, I'm gonna play a couple clips for you guys because I know that's exactly what you wanna hear. You don't wanna hear me talk about it. You guys wanna hear the exhaust system itself. So I'm gonna play a few clips that I've gotten and I'll make a full uh, new exhaust montage video coming maybe even as the next upload but for now I'm just gonna play a couple clips for you guys and I
So, as you guys can tell, this thing sounds freaking mental. But the best part of all of this, this car does not drone one bit. And I tested this out. I took this up uh, to the Pavilions, which is a car show every Saturday. And I'm cruising at 70, 75 the whole way up there. And I, te you know, of course I have the music and the AC on, but I'm like, you know, I don't hear any drone. I'm, th I'm thinking maybe that's just because there's, you know, I have the AC and the radio on. So I turned both of them off. I even put the windows down and I could maybe hear it just a tiny little bit. I expected this thing to drone so much considering that the only restricting thing on this exhaust is the tiny Turbo X muffler, maybe like 10 inches in width in the back and that's all that's restricting this car. So you know, common sense would tell you, especially considering that my B20793 has more restriction on it than this does and that thing drones like no tomorrow and I hate it. Which is why I'm probably gonna figure out a solution to that. So I fully expected this to drone, but it does not drone at all. But as soon as you get on it, it just wakes up and the term I've been using to describe it to everyone is that it screams. It just rips and it sounds so good. That's gonna wrap up this video guys. Again, a huge shout out to Krona and E-Euro Parts for sending me this exhaust system. Now, my review of this exhaust system so far is not biased because these parts were sent to me. This is an honest review guys and anyone else that has Krona out there or you know, knows e-euro parts know that they're both great reputable companies so i'm not saying this just because they want me to say it. they want me to give me uh or give you guys their my honest feedback on it so with that being said that's gonna wrap up this video guys i i am in love so intercooler is coming next um hopefully i'll get that started in the next couple of weeks depends on when i have free time with school and work and everything um is really the reason why this took so long so i apologize to you guys for that i've been teasing it for a while one more thing i gotta add real quick the backfires on this are crazy can hear that but in the full exhaust montage video there will be plenty of backfire so i'm just gonna drive home now because i'm just gonna keep doing stupid shit with this car if i don't take it home so see you guys next time